And in this video, I'll be showing you how to create your own sign language detection model. The first thing you want to do is scroll all the way down here to the setting up the Google Colab environment and download the sign language detection Python notebook. And then on your Google Drive, you want to make a folder called sign language detection and then upload your Python notebook. To open the notebook, you can simply double click. If you've never used Google Colab before, Google Colab is a platform where you can write, run, and share code. To run each code block, you can either click on this play button here, or you can click on the code block and hold Control enter on your keyboard, or Command enter if you're on a MacBook. You can see that a code block has been run either by this check mark here or the output down here. To add a code block, you can click on this plus code button here, and to delete a code block, you can click on the trash icon next to each cell. Now, let's get started. In our first code section, we'll be installing our dependencies. To install these dependencies, all you need to do is run all of these code blocks. And you can either run these one at a time, or collapse this section and run this play button. These dependencies will be required for tasks such as image processing and machine learning. After a few minutes, your dependencies will finish installing and you'll get this pop-up. And when you see that, you can simply just restart the section. Now the dependencies are installed in your environment. Keep in mind that you no longer have to run the section every time your runtime disconnects, but you might have to run the other code blocks. Next, we'll be importing the libraries so that we can use them in our notebook. This will allow us to access functions in our dependencies that we just downloaded as well as other Function. Then we'll mount our Google Drive. Finally, if you run this lattice code block, it will create folders in the directory that you defined earlier. And if you go back to your Google Drive, and if you don't see anything, you can simply refresh it. You should see a new folder called test videos. Now that we set up our environment, it's time to learn some sign language. You have a few options as to where you can learn this, one including YouTube and just looking up learn sign language. Another option is to go to signlanguage101.com and use their dictionary. Let's try giraffe for example, and in the video, you'll be able to see the sign for giraffe. After picking your signs, you'll want to take a video of you doing all of them. This is just our initial test video so we can make sure our code can process videos. The signs that I have chosen are hello, thank you, and see you later. Feel free to add as many different signs as you would like. Just make sure you know that the more different kinds of gestures you want to include, the more data you have to collect. When you are done collecting your video, go back to your Google Drive and in the test videos folder, upload your video. Now back to the notebook. This first code block under the detecting key points using MP Holistic will help us create some helper functions that will detect our key points and visualize them. Make sure to run this code block. In the next code block, we'll just want to add the exact name of our file that we just uploaded. So mine is called image underscore 8518, image underscore 8518, and then run this code block. We can see that I actually got an error that says it cannot open the video file and please check if the file exists and the path is correct. We can see back in our folders that this file is indeed in the right directory. So we can just go back here and then mount the Google Drive again. Then we can go back and run our code block again. And if it still cannot find the file, we can go to runtime, restart session, yes. And then run all of these importing libraries again including code block 2a and then this code block. We can now see that our code is running properly and it is now detecting key points on each frame of the video. Now Google Colab is not able to process these key points and run the video at the same time, which is why each frame is shown one by one like this. Depending on how long your video is, this may take a while to run. The code block in the extracting key point value section defines a helper function that will put our key point data into a format that's easy for our machine learning model to use. Make sure to run this code block. In this section, we'll be setting up our new folders to collect our data. Here we have a set of actions or sign language gestures for our model to detect. And for now, I have a hello, thank you, and see you later. Feel free to add more if you'd like. And all you need to do to do that is add more here and make sure that each one is separated by a comma and surrounded by either single or double quotes. So I can add another one like cat or maybe see you 
you tomorrow and so on but for now i'll be sticking to the three that are already defined make sure to run this code block now if you go back to your folder on google drive you'll see that there are two more folders called mp data and videos on the inside of both you'll see the same subfolders and these are the folder names that you have defined earlier we can go back to the videos folder and see the same subfolders. Now we can start with collecting our data. Using a phone or camera, collect 30 video samples for each gesture. Make sure that the footage focuses solely on the gesture and avoid including actions like reaching towards the camera to stop the recording. If you are filming alone, trim out these parts or having a second person press the record button can make this process easier and result in cleaner videos. Try to make each video slightly different to help the model learn better. For example, you can move your hands at different speeds while signing. Vary your position in the frame, so either closer or farther from the camera. Add small body movements like shifting your weight or turning slightly. And change facial expressions, since facial landmarks are also captured. When you are done recording your videos, go back to your Google Drive and then go into the videos folder and then upload the videos to the correct subfolder. Now there should be 30 videos in each folder and you can check by clicking on each folder and then holding Ctrl A on your keyboard and you'll see a count over here that says 30 items. Now we'll check the thank you folder, Control all, 30 items, go back, see you later, Control A and 30 items. So we have enough videos to train our model now. Now, back to the Google Notebook, if you run into some errors, you may have to run the previous code blocks again. So I'll be running sections 1, 2, 3, and 4 again. The code block under the collecting key point values for training and testing section will read each video, grab 30 frames, extract key points from each frame, and saves them for training your sign language model. Run this code block. Don't worry if this takes a few minutes to run. Videos have a lot of data. You can check the progress of this code block underneath here and it will tell you where which video it's working on, how many frames it has, and where it's saving the key point data. Next, we'll assign a unique number to each gesture in our data set. We can now see that hello corresponds to zero, thank you corresponds to one, and see you later corresponds to two. We do this because machine learning models learn better with numbers than words. This next code block will organize our data before giving it to our model for training. Don't worry if this code block takes a while to run. And the last code block in this section will simply split our data into train and test. And we can see here we have 85 videos to train our model on, each with 30 frames each and 1,662 features, which are each of the key points. There are five videos in the test data, and we're predicting which of the three gestures each video is showing. Finally, we'll be training our LSTM model to classify sign language gestures. And the reason that we are using an LSTM model, or also known as long short-term memory, is because this particular type of model is really good at learning patterns over time, such as with sequences of frames in a video. This first code block will build our model structure. This next code block will compile the model. And finally, this last code block will train the model. Don't worry if this takes a few minutes to run. Finally, we can make predictions on our test data. We can run this first code block. Remember when we split our data into train and test, we had five videos that we'll be using for our testing. Now we can see if our model was able to classify our test data correctly. And to do that, you can just run these two code blocks and we can see hello and hello, which do match. Keep in mind that the one on top is the prediction of the model and the one on the bottom is the actual label. And since there are five videos in our test data, we can change this number to be any number between zero and four. So let's try another one, zero run both of these and we can see that they don't match. So if this is the case, we might need to go back in later to add more data or adjust some other things to make our model more accurate. But for now, let's just save our model. This next code block, you can load your model later on if your runtime disconnects. And this would save you some time because you wouldn't need to run the training the model 
code again. Then we can evaluate how well our model did by running this code block and then this one. And when you're reading a confusion matrix, you want as many values in this diagonal line as possible because we want everything that is the actual class to be predicted positive and everything that is not the class to be predicted negative as well. If we see something like this, that means that the actual sign was thank you, but the model was not able to detect it. That's why it is actually positive, but predicted negative. And we can see that my model actually performed pretty poorly. The only one that it was able to do the best in was hello. And let's just check the accuracy score. And we can see that it's 0.4 or 40% which means it got two out of the five testing videos correctly. And that is not very great, but it's not the end of the world because we only had five videos for our testing data. But for now, let's move on and test our model on a longer video. I already changed the name of this video over here to match the test video that I used earlier. So let's just run this code block. And we can see it running just about here. When this code block is done running, you can go back to your Google Drive. And now you can see a new video called output video, which is also in the test videos subfolder. So we can just view it by double clicking it. And we can see that it struggles to detect hello and thank you. It keeps on thinking that it's see you later. And now it thinks see you later is thank you. So we'll have to make some changes to increase the accuracy of the model. There are a few different things you can do to improve your model. I think the problem with my data right now is that it's too diverse for the amount of data that we have. So I'm going to go back and re-record the sign language gestures. And this time I'm going to keep the videos a little bit more consistent this time. This is just so that I can see that the model works when the data is more similar to each other. So this time I'm going to stay about the same distance away from the camera. And the only thing I'm really changing this time is which hand I'm using and I'm turning more slightly to the left or right instead of more. I am also going to take a new test video because I noticed in my other one that I messed up the see you later sign a few times. So I'm going to go back on my Google Drive and then I'm going to rename some folders. So I'm going to rename this one MP data zero. Okay, and then I'll also rename this one videos zero. And I'll also rename the model, our original model as well. So my model zero. Okay. Then I'm going to go back and restart the session and then install and import the libraries again. You also need to run sections two, three, and four again because remember four will set up our folders. We can see that the new folders will be created again and I'll just upload my videos as we did earlier. After we've uploaded the videos, I'm going to mount the Google Drive again. This is so that we can get access to the videos we just uploaded. And now I'm going to run sections five through nine or five through 10 again. And we can see that this second time it performed much better and actually had an accuracy of 100%. And I've already run this code block with the new video and I'll just open it up here and it's detecting hello. It's doing that pretty well. Thank you. It's struggling a little bit. And see you later. It is also struggling with see you later. So the test video was a little bit different from what the model has trained on, which is why it hasn't done that well. Some other things you can do to improve your model is to simply increase the amount of data that your model is training on. Just remember that if you do that, you would have to change both the number se sequences here to maybe 60, as well as this one to 60 and you would have to go back to your folder and either rename this folder or, or delete it. You could also change the structure of the LSTM itself 
or maybe change the number of epochs that it trains on. There's a lot more things you can do to improve your model, but these are just to start. And with that, we are done with this coding tutorial. Remember that you can find written instructions as well as this notebook linked in the description below. And for a thousand other projects for all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.